Good morning, guys. We are back with another Elite Coach Live each week, coming live to you guys to help you in your journey in becoming the elite coach that you want to become, whether that is in the fitness industry in terms of being a personal trainer, whether you're becoming a performance coach, or whether you're becoming a physiotherapist or coaching, whatever it is you're wanting to do. We are turning up on a weekly basis to make sure that we can help you in your development. As always, guys, drop some comments in, say hello, show us some love. And today I am joined by not one person, but two people on the line. Okay, two absolute legends. So I'm joined by Mr. Wayne Lakin and Brendan Chapman. How are we doing, gentlemen? Are we all good? Really good, thanks, Steve. Yeah, good, thank you, Steve. Good stuff, good stuff. So I had a little bit of a catch up with Wayne offline. So Wayne, do you want to just tell us how, how good your holiday was? It was nice and relaxing, wasn't it? And, and really chilled out, wasn't it? You know what? It was very relaxing. COVID day one. <laughs> so get there. Get You're in there bed. On the, got, yeah, literally. Got there Saturday, went on the beach Sunday, got up on Monday morning, and I said to the other half, I said, I oh, can't taste these cornflakes because we, we live it up when we go on holiday. Yeah. So <laughs> Can't taste these cornflakes. And she went, oh, it'll be sunstroke from yesterday. I was like, don't think it stops your taste, this sunstroke lark. <laughs> and uh, I was having my coffee and I was like, I don't know if I can taste this coffee or I know how coffee should taste. So, And then as I got through the Monday, I was like, I feel rough. And then Tuesday, I was just on the balcony, couldn't get out of the room. Wow. Wednesday was bed and balcony, bed mm -hmm. and balcony, bed and Thursday was rubbish. Friday, I felt a little bit better. Saturday, I felt great, but that was the day we came home. So, yeah, <laughs> great. Holiday. Where did you get to, Wayne? Where was that? Uh, we went to Alcudia, Spain. That is a shame, isn't it? I, I had something, not COVID, but um, I'd had a, I think I'd had like a minor operation and um, the, like a few weeks before and I'd been taking ibuprofen to to kind of get that swelling and so on down and like systematically taking ibuprofen so anyway i got got to the airport in majorca and one of the things i like to do when i get to spain is have a coffee and uh, one of their like freshly squeezed orange juices so i was like i'm getting off the plane get the coffee get the orange juice down the orange juice beautiful got to the apartment and literally within hours I was getting like this sort of gut pain and long story short I was I was in bed for like three or four days just just bent over double in pain yeah. and it wasn't until I kind of got home found out that the ibuprofens probably eroded my stomach lining yeah. and had some kind of alkaline and uh, rebuilding supplements that is like yeah, this happens all the time, you know, for chronic uh, chronic uh, ibuprofen use. And obviously, the orange juice is basically like you're putting like an acid <laughs> into that thing. So, um, yeah, like you can't you can't go through life without having a write off of a holiday, though, can you? We've all had it sometimes one way or the other. It doesn't matter what will happen. We're all going to have a write off in there, I think. So there you <laughs> go, ladies and gentlemen, there's an exclusive. Brendan is a ibuprofen addict there you go <laughs> <laughs> you just you're going on holiday in a few weeks steve so uh <laughs> <laughs> fingers crossed i'm yeah. just gonna lock myself in this room now <laughs> yeah. we, we need to schedule one of these for two weeks just to see how steve's holiday's going <laughs> <laughs> or just do it do one from bed with steve just ah, like that in the corner <laughs> and, you, and you two just laughing at me ah, <laughs> oh we will be yeah yeah <laughs> Right. Anyway, anyway. Well, cheers for sharing that. Uh, we, 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 we're not SSC coaches if we can't laugh, laugh at other people's misery. It's part of the job, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? And it kind of leads quite well in today's to topic. So today, guys, we're going to be chatting about doing the grunt work. And, and what I mean by that is, is pretty much doing the ugly work. So there's been a few scenarios lately on the mentorship when I've been chatting to um, students about growing their business etc and they're like oh well i've tried this strategy i've tried that i've tried this and it always comes back to are you staying consistent with it and again actually are you working as hard as you possibly can with it you are not in a a privileged enough position yet to be able to say oh i need to find this i need to polish this you just need to just do the work you don't have enough information 
And it, it's also linked back to a conversation we had um, a few weeks back, didn't it, Wayne, where it was actually a few of your athletes had great metrics over here, great metrics over there, but they just couldn't bring it together because they weren't doing those horrible grunt workouts, right? Yeah, I, I called it the, the, the putting themselves in that dark place. And it doesn't matter what workout, you know, we all have to go through them workouts. And whether we do strength workouts, whether we do them Metcons, whether we do that, them the hard, grafty, long workouts. There's there's them workouts where you've just got to go. Do you know what? This is going to be horrid. This is going to be halfway through. I'm going to feel rubbish. It might be that third set of a set of five. It might be that 40 minutes into an hour workout. Then you know the long endurance workouts. But I think, like you've just said, I've I've had athletes just just recently where we've got to put all that together and put it into a different environment so they're doing it for one thing our, most of our athletes they do their metcons for something else so we've got to see it transfer when we're in business i think that's the same thing isn't it it isn't we, we don't do the we don't just do business we're doing something to have an outcome for our business so that that horrible thing in the middle has got to have an outcome somewhere else mm. and i think that's sometimes what we forget is that horrible bit it's for something else. Hmm. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah, totally, totally. I mean, Brendan, obviously, we've chatted about it as well, isn't it? You can sort of set up, and there's a lot of like shortcuts and hacks and and what have you. But I mean, we had a discussion the other day. It was like you can have all these hacks, you can have all these shortcuts, but nothing outbeats hard work, does it? Yeah, and I think I do think the. The key thing here is the outcome. What what is it you, you you're trying to achieve with it? Because why why would you do it otherwise? And um, you know whether you're an athlete trying to get to an end destination, or whether you're a coach or a or somebody else in a in a totally different environment trying to build something for themselves. You know that the results are on the other side of the discomfort, aren't they? And mm. um, and so, but it but when you it's easy to talk yourself out of that do a set less, finish early, um, not write the email, not do the video. Be, when you don't have a real clear vision of why is it that I'm doing this again? Uh, because, you know, there are it's a job, isn't it? It's a mm. job being an athlete and it's a job building a business, but you're doing it because you want something or you, you want to have an impact or you want to create something for yourself. You know, it's that classic phrase it's a cliche for a reason the um working working for a few years like other people won't so you can live the rest of your life like other people can it's mm. it's that kind of piece isn't it whether whether that bit is a gold medal because most people will never have that gold medal there's only one person and or whether it's a business owner and you've got a gym that you finally managed to get your manager in and your infrastructure in and and now you can go on holiday and be ill for a week by yourself. You know, <laughs> you're living the dream then, aren't you, Wayne? <laughs> oh, Wayne. <laughs> no, I completely agree. I think um, for I think that outcome is, you know, what what are you trying to get? So if it's more members in your gym, how what do you need to do? So the grunt work for me there would be I've got to go and stand in the high street and give out leaflets. I've got to do that. That's that horrible bit where you've got to interact with mm. 150 people on a Saturday afternoon trying to create more members for a gym. Yes. It, I think that's for me where that grunt work is. Is it? I'm, I'm not, I said to Steve that I, this puts, doing this kind of stuff for me is where I, this, I call this my grunt work because it puts me out of my comfort zone, putting yourself out there to be judged. And I know I've spoken to Brendan and Steve about, you know, that imposter syndrome. Should I really be here? You know, put, put in, even doing these chats, I'm like, why do they want to speak to me? It's, it's, I find it I find it odd. But that to yeah. me is my grunt hey, work. Hey, please, that's it. It's a good point, Wade. I'm not joking, mate. <laughs> um, so that that for me is my grunt work. That that yeah. for me is the bit that puts me out of my comfort zone. It puts me into that place where I have to put myself out there to be judged. And as coaches, we're doing that daily. Mm -hmm. um, we, yeah. we put ourselves out there. We put our programs out there. Our yeah. our clients are the ones going out there and going, "Oh, that was really good." Or, do you know what? I didn't didn't get what I wanted from that. And it's easy to not do that way, isn't it? Like, yeah, wiring. 
it's easy to to say, do you know what? The sun's shining, or uh, it's not going to make that big a difference, or um, or even just no, oh, nobody's taking these flyers. Let's just leave them on the wall. You know, there's there's levels of excuses that you can draw yeah. on. It's so easy to do that, isn't it? Yeah, completely. And I think that that for me as a coach or or my or my gym. I suppose I can come at it multifaceted because I've got a gym, I'm a coach and I do, you know, I know that I have worked with athletes or I'm working with athletes. And so for my gym part of it, if it's just more members, you know, that's probably the worst bit for me because that is the bit where you've got to go into towns, you've got to do, you've got to pick up the phones. We might have to do some cold calling, you know, people are leaving. It's that, it's that, why are you leaving, et cetera, et cetera. And, and finding yeah. the half truth, that's your grunt work with, with the coaching. How am I going to get my next client? Is it going out again and doing the same thing? And and I think it's that outcome based thing that you you were speaking about earlier, Brendan. Of what do I want? What do I need to achieve to put in that grunt work to do it? It isn't just going to happen. People don't just rock up to my door. No, no. no. And I I think one of the one of the big things that I see a lot, and I have to coach myself on this. But it, it links to your points, Wayne, is is that is being honest with yourself and embracing the thing that needs to happen there. I do think that, again, whether you're an athlete or whether you're um, a business person, let's just use those two examples. You know, if, if you're not strong enough and you really need to get under the bar and you hate that, it's it's really brutally uncomfortable. If you've got to start running... 400 meter efforts and you, you you're going to be throwing up and but you know that that's going to unlock something that you don't or you don't currently possess same thing there and in business it is that kind of where are the next customers coming from and what do i need to do to to get that done cold calling is a great example you know it's actually not easy, but it's it, the easy bit. You, you, it's easy to get like some Facebook ads thrown up, or to do that, and then kind of think. Actually, nobody's nobody's joining the gym and paying me money though from doing that. So Facebook ads don't work. But it's the bit in the middle. Have you phoned them three or four times in the first hour that that lead comes into your system to 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 welcome them, to bring them in, and that is the grunt work, and. Um, and you've got to have the honesty to say, no, I haven't, and I need to, and now I will do, or somebody will that we bring into this business to facilitate that. And and that's something that it, it's never easy that. It, it never, you, there's always something, wherever you are in your journey, athlete, business person, you might have a hundred gyms. There's still something in there that is going to be the horrible bit but it unlocks the pleasure on the other side. Is do, do you know what I mean? Yeah. You must see that stay as well. Absolutely, and and I think I think ultimately it's in a world where we've got this strategy is better than this way. Or you, we're so information rich. There's 101 ways to make money doing this, 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 and this, and this. That paralysis by analysis is in overdrive as well because that grunt work because it's horrible. You're not getting immediate feedback as well. You are just going through going through the mill. You don't always get that, right, okay, I feel great. I feel stronger. Actually, you feel worse when you're doing those horrible workouts and you think, what am I doing? Your brain's just going into overdrive. When you're in business, when you first start in, we talk about the power list. We talk about talking to people on the gym floor. You have 10 conversations. You might have nobody sign up. And you don't get that instant feedback, that instant gratification that we're all built to have, especially now we're conditioned these days to have things at the drop of a hat. So it's having the patience to know, like you say, get that connection with the outcome and just keep pushing through. And, and one of the sayings I like is you, you actually need to take ownership of where you are now and create enough level of pain which drives action. Because if you don't have enough connection with the, the pain of where you're at now, you will never go through the barrier to get the outcome at the end. You know, and I think a lot of people say, oh, well, I'll try this, I'll try that. Stop. Just think about, are you happy with where you're at now, fitness-wise, business-wise? And if the answer is no, 
amplify that pain even more so when it gets hard and it gets tough that'll keep you pushing through and i think a lot of people really struggle to get that because who wants to put themselves in pain but it, it's actually a, a really important thing that we need to do to stay the course you know and one thing i'd like to talk about is there's i think there's a there's a time in peace with this grunt work i think in the beginning it's almost like your general prep phase of right so everything's quite broad so if you're starting off as a pt you're just kind of you don't know what your niche is. You don't really know what you enjoy. You just know you love fitness and you're just speaking to everyone and doing things. So it's going to be broad, but then it'll start to focus in. You're like, actually, I'll end up doing that. So your grunt work will end up start to becoming targeted. But sometimes you'll have to come back and do widespread grunt work again because you've reached another level. It's like a pyramid. You get to the top and then you go, oh, there's another door here. It's a wide base. And you're going again all the time as you level up. You lose new skills. Brennan, you probably have it. You've you've gone through various different stages where you've leveled up and you thought, right, I've made it, opened the door and went, crap, I need to hire staff. I need to do this now. I need to do this. All right, okay, I'm in a position. Oh, we need to get to the next level. Oh, this is new thing. We speak to investors, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, and all of those things are choice, aren't they? You, you mm. have, everybody has the right to decide if they want to, to push on or if they're fine as they are and that's that's absolutely fine i, I was talking to a, a, a fitness a gym owner this week i won't name names but really good really decent solid business and they described it as a lifestyle business and um and i was sort of talking to them as a a, a critical friend basically just saying you know that that's great and but if you want to step it up, which was the purpose of the call, you know, this is going to happen. You, you're going to have to do this, this and this. You're going to have to invest some money. You're going to have to go and see people. If, if you can't fund it yourself, you can go and get funding. But you, you might have to provide some security for that. You know, that that that's the pain point potentially, potentially for that, you know. And um, and if you want it, you might have to you might not be working in your hometown you might have to get on in the car and go to different places and to to do that grunt work that unlocks the other stuff. Mm. And, and ultimately, they then have a choice to say, I've thought that through. I'm absolutely fine with that. I don't want or I don't want to do that. I'm really comfortable with what I've got now. And that's their right to do that. But that step change by default is 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 you're moving into an uncomfortable space that requires you to manage your own emotions and get stuff done that you've probably never done before wade through through treacle you know get get other people on board with that vision and it's not until you've, you've sort of done that you, you can actually experience the the joy or the the next level change if you want to keep going is it it's mm. as simple as that absolutely, well, I absolutely. I don't. I don't mind saying I've had conversations with both of you where I've had to step up and go, guys, I'm I'm uncomfortable here. I need some help. I know, and I've had conversations with both of with Brendan and yourself, Steve. I've, yeah. I've called you two and gone, right. I've I've gone from gym owner, coach to then going into the professional environment with you guys by my side, and then going, right, guys, I'm now working with elites. Where where do I go from here? I don't think I'm good enough. This is me being uncomfortable. This is me now having to level up. And you guys go, right, this is what you now need to do. And then gone through that and that and that. And, you know, even recently, Stu, I've gone to you and gone, right, I'm not comfortable here with, with we were talking about testing athletes and stuff like that. And again, I've had to level up again and, and do stuff. So I don't think it, it can be business. And we can all, I'll go back to Steve's point on the gym floor. You know, we've all had to go. And I remember my first time, my boss going to me, right, we're going to need to speak to these clients. You need to speak to them. What what they doing? What they training today? And I remember going up to clients who have got their earphones in and you're going, and, and you're trying to speak to them and you're trying to mime to them and it's so uncomfortable feeling so far out of your comfort zone. And I think it goes back to the, to everything. I've had, I've had similar conversations with both of you about it. So... You know, I can really, yeah. and that having that deep emotion, I think, Steve, is 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 that deep connection and that deep that deep feeling is where 
you're uncomfortable. But then once you start getting comfortable with being uncomfortable, that's when you start to grow, I think. Once you can, and we, we've all heard that, that um, be, be comfortable being uncomfortable. Once that starts to happen, that's where I think you will look. Like a bit of frozen, oh, yeah. Yeah. Then, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, I, I think that's a really good point. And um, how do you get comfortable being uncomfortable? In my eyes, you've got to you've got to repeat that because it, it is a you lose it if you don't use it. Um, I, I we talked about on other ECL Steve, things like I I I look at the running and. Um, you know, success conditioning. I know it's cheesy, but running hard, flat out, getting under the bar, that's conditioning for, because it's, it's a constant metaphor of that, of actually every training session that you do is is basically a career mm. in an hour. You know, you go through the pain to get to the other side and you unlock something and so on. And then there's an adaptation and you come back but um, you've got to keep on doing it. You've got to repeat that. And linking back to my point on honesty, the key thing here is, you know, good, really good example, I think, that way, and about talking to people on the gym floor. The key KPI, what is that in your life, in your business? The key KPI for getting clients in a big box gym <clears throat> or even a just a, you know, a member's gym is talking to other human beings in that gym. So, you know, if I'm coaching you or I'm managing you, I'm, I'm going to be saying, how many conversations have you had today then? How many meaningful conversations? Not just how you're doing, but actually getting into that. And um, it's the same in any realm. What is your key KPI? You've got to be honest with that. If you're not honest with yourself on what it is and are you hitting it, all you're doing is lying to yourself and making excuses. And, and you're probably going to end up a little bit bitter and a little bit like, jealous it's just like life's too short embrace the grind as old gary v says but mm. first and foremost it is that identification of the key kpi when you when you're looking to build your s d network what's one of the first things i always say build your contact map wherever mm. you are put a pin in your location wherever you're prepared to go locate every single sports team sports club whoever you fancy working with, and then then the work begins, not not in compiling that, ringing them, meeting them, going to warm-ups, giving out free warm-ups, building that contact, actually making relationships with people. And I honestly can't see how, wherever you are in the country, if you do that contact map and you go and meet people every single week, I honestly cannot see how you're not going to have clients, even if you start out working for free, how you're not in three or four months going to have multiple clients. And mm. so straight away, I look at that and I think, if you haven't got those clients, what have you been doing the previous three or four months then? You clearly have not been doing that. But mm. that's the hard work. And um, yeah, it's, it's not, it's a simple formula, but it's not easy. Uh, you just mm. got to embrace it, I think, haven't you? Absolutely. It reminds me of that saying, I, I can't remember which boxer it is. Um, it's on the tip of my tongue, but it's uh, don't, exp don't, don't um, expect to perform in the lights if you don't do the, the work in the dark, you know, so getting out and doing the road work and stuff like that. When it comes fight night, don't expect to perform if you haven't done the road work, done the gritty, gritty work as well, do you know? So I think flipping it on fitness there, Brendan, obviously you're talking about the runs and stuff, and we've talked about business and, and obviously we've got a lot of S and C coaches. So I just want to sort of pick your chuck it a question to you guys. When do you see it as a critical point to get your athletes to expose themselves to that grunt work or put that work out on them? I know Brennan, you've used something in the past, like the Hardman challenge and stuff. I know that was set up as a charity thing, but yeah. Uh, then continued that way and i know you're a big believer on because obviously you work with combat athletes and stuff so sometimes having somebody's hands and throat around your neck is not a comfortable thing so you need to try and replicate that without strangling them yourself so when do you see that as a critical point to integrate that into someone's program or when do you try and drop that into them do you want to take that way and i'll let you go for 
So for me, we we I'm now working with British Judo. Uh, so we've we've got big toy. I've got a team out in Hungary at the minute. I've got a team going out to Croatia next week. We've got the Commonwealth Games coming up. And for for me, we it's different. I suppose it's different for me. But what we're looking at now is if I put and I think we we spoke about this. If I put five kilo on somebody's squat. Is that going to make them more physical on the judo mat? Probably not. Might make them a bit stronger. Might stop them from being injured a little bit more. Maybe it might help with their their whole uh, strength and physicality, but it won't make them more physical in the on the fight or in the mat. So then we've got to start looking at that grunt work. We've got to look at their metcons. We've got to look at putting them in that dark place under. I know I sent you a photo yesterday, Steve, mm-hmm. of the guys. We had them out on the grass, tire flipping, rowing proper you know metcon kind of work so once we've got an athlete gone through that gpp work they've gone through that probably a bit bit of um specific training then we might look at that physicality of that athlete and where where are they for me with the elites where are they in comparison to the rest of the world so we look at some of these western europeans or eastern europeans who seem to be able to wrestle from anywhere and fight from anywhere. So they'll just pick you up off the floor and throw you because that's their background, that wrestling kind of background. Where what where are we in comparison to them? So, and again, by doing a squat may not help them be able to pick somebody up off the floor and throw them. So I've got to replicate in slightly different or unusual ways. So we're just looking at that now with some of our athletes. So is there a specific time or place to put that into a program? yes but it depends where that athlete is sitting mm. at the time in their whole periodized plan if that makes sense so mm. you know i'm not going to start it a week before an event mm. but i may start it 10 weeks before an event for five weeks for example and then go into maybe a speed phase or a, or a power phase depending on what they're going to do but the overall plan now we're looking at the physicality of athletes going into tournaments so uh, i mean i'm going to leave this call and the the hungarian grand slam starts with the judo guy so i'll be watching that and comparing where we are to some of the other athletes to take back and then start again in their plans so that's what we look at but again it depends where they are within their periodized plan mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah uh, yeah no, that I, you've nailed it there and um I suppose the the only thing I'd add to that would be it's specific and um, and also the timing element there. So, what is grunt work? How do we define that? Well, it's relative to the person that you're dealing with, isn't it? Mm-hmm. And um, and so you know, I've had that. I think similar to what you were saying in a, in a sense there, where I did some work with a really talented pro rugby player from Harlequins uh, back in the day and he was underpowered he was definitely not strong enough but there was a, a mental component to the application of that as well so obviously we know the kind of the link between strength and uh, confidence and mindset it, in most people, it's, it's if you feel strong, if you are stronger, you feel stronger. You'll use that strength. You'll be confident. But so, so I, I'd almost split this into three components: the, the the psychological, the technical, and the physiological. And it may well be that going to see a sports psychology and doing visualization and and doing technical psychology drills is the grunt work for somebody because they're ticking all the other boxes whereas you know i I remember working with a a, a top 50 in the world badminton player and um she was pretty strong she was definitely mentally very very good very good but she had a a a challenge with excuse me with them the movement pattern to the back corners of the court so essentially it's like a crossover lunge and so we developed a movement drill that she did every single session before 
the phys the S and C and the physical uh, the technical training sessions, where it was basically like um almost like specific plyos and movement drills for five minutes, no more. And um, and it just gave her that spring in a step, very relevant to that one particular technical challenge that she was facing. And similarly, you know, badminton's a good example because it's a highly technical sport with a very physical underpinning. And so that whole badminton squad, um, the amount of, you know, 400 metre runs, S&C, hard lifting heavy lifting that that squad did was was unbelievable really um and when and your point wayne about how who are you competing with you know that gb were competing with the malaysians and um yeah. the Chinese. and so you're looking at what are the physical attributes of the the best people in the world here what are they doing and how can we get somewhere close to that and and you know it was well known at the time that the likes of sort of Lin Dan, who was I think world number one at the time, was was comfortably asked to grass squatting three times body weight. Now, all right, he's he's not a heavy guy, but it's still impressive. And our guys were some of them were struggling with body weight, so it's like we need to up the strength here. We need to get because the link between strength and muscular endurance and movement endurance is we know very very strong and we are nowhere near that so i think grunt work is contextual and specific to who you're dealing with and it could be one of any of those components that we've talked about and if you take it right back to the general public or somebody that's an amateur or aspiring athlete even it could literally just be doing work for one hour you know, building a capacity <clears throat> to, to to endure the work for just an hour. Mm -hmm. um, you know, some lots of people cannot do that, and um, and that's what we've got to build first. So I think it comes back to your coaching skill of what boxes are we trying to tick, where do our athletes currently fall down, and um, and let's raise that up. And then you have to prioritize it to your point, Wayne. You're not going to start doing brutal metcon circuits the week before they've got to be on the map and, and that's the art and science of this whole thing pulled together into yeah. into one and, and remember as well that we're not alone we are part of a multidisciplinary team it might be that the psychologist is obviously doing that work you're doing this work but you have a conversation to say we're not doing it all together because it's too much and so on and so forth so it's it's understanding your place within that whole support team as well and not trying to stay, stay in your lane basically i think is the is the point yeah yeah i think i think the the, the big, big takeaway for for me guys is as we've said it many a time is you're moving forward that that grunt work will always move you forward if, as long as you are moving forward to an outcome and that grunt, grunt work is taking you to a specific destination so if we look at training uh, for my guys obviously they've got to stand for 10 minutes lifting horrible weight and it just it's continuous so they need to get familiar so we we over egg that so they do local muscular endurance horrible sets of 20 minutes really hammering that just every now and again in some really dis discomfort bit high levels of discomfort you know because it's leading to an outcome you know i think where where people fall down with the grunt work is they end up becoming a busy idiot and they end up just doing lots of different grunt work but it doesn't end up going to a, a specific de destination and they actually use grunt work as, as an out do you know they actually yeah it's, but it's not true grunt work it's just work it's like yeah. oh well i'm doing this yeah. i'm doing that i'm doing a bit of this it's like well what are you doing where are you moving closer yeah. to it's like you're actually just going on a roundabout here you well, know sometimes you perversely that that work is not grunt work for that person they they kind of yeah. pervert, enjoy that you know, mixed martial artists are a good example. You give them a Metcon circuit with loads of horrible stuff in it, and they'll they'll eat it up. They do it all day. They they love that because it's got that perverse link to to performance and pain. You give them a a really high quality, I don't know, ten sets of two strength training. That's grunt work for that person. 
it's the stuff that you don't want to do. Mm -hmm. It's the stuff that you will avoid. That's the crunt work, isn't it? And that's yeah. where the honesty comes in of like, what is the key KPI that's going to raise your performance here? Right, do that then. Yeah, I, I remember I, we had a lads for, in fight camp and stuff and they already come in great shape. So we just had them doing contrast training and obviously contrast training on, on the face of it looks great. But actually when you're doing it, it's pretty boring because obviously you've got quite long rest periods. These guys hated it, hated it because they were on a clock and they were like, can we go yet? No, 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 you don't, you don't you're not, you're not explosive. You're not yeah. moving. And, but by the end of that block, they were like, this is amazing. They were jumping up, hitting the ceiling. I feel so, I feel great. I'm exploding and stuff. But for them, that grunt work was just stop moving for a bit. Let your body do what it needs to do. And let's make sure you got the intent rather than just hitting a tire, for example, you know? So, but now really, really good conversation that guys really, really enjoyed that. I mean, guys, have you got any like final takeaways, any points that you, you want to share on, on doing the grunt work before, we let the lovely listeners and viewers get on with the rest of their day. For me, I think I think Brendan summed it up. The, the, I think the grunt work has to have an outcome. So otherwise you do just end up training or you do end up, you know, what what do you want from what you're doing? And and I think it doesn't we we've we've talked mostly about the grunt work being a physicality or a physical, but I think again, Brendan said that not necessarily that is it it's it's the bit that we don't want to do and it might be do you know what i've got to sit down and and send out my emails i've got an email list that i've got to compile i've got to send that out that could be my grunt work i think we, we've talked about from us coaching a lot but it can be that i my worst one is my accountant always always wants to see my bank statements and i'm like i can't be bothered to scan them in and send them over it takes me about 40 minutes that might be my grunt work for the day. That's the bit that I've got to do. And if I don't, they're just going to keep on to me and on to me and on to me. There is an outcome because my tax is low and I don't have to pay the tax man as much money, et cetera, et cetera. We'll, edit that, that out. we'll edit that bit out, mate. Don't worry, don't worry. You'll snip it. What time? <laughs> fine, fine. Um, they take that much off me anyway. It doesn't matter. Um, but that I think it has to be that that in context, What is what are we talking about with that grunt work? but it's got to have its out. For me, it's got to, the biggest takeaway for me is the outcome. What do we want from the grunt work? What are we trying to achieve? Then we can put ourselves into that dark place to try and achieve it. And I think the last thing to take out is even if we grunt work for a year, we do that grunt work for a year and we don't get to where we want, there'll still be a hell of a lot of learning that we'll have done and it won't be wasted. You know, there'll still be stuff there where we go, do you know what? That was hard. I'll either be fitter anyway, <laughs> I'll either be stronger anyway, or in business, I'll have moved my business on in some way anyway. So I think, you know, it's still worthwhile. I, th I think you're just trying to not show how much money you've got in your bank, Wayne. That's that's the real reason, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. there's, there's more zeros than numbers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, and yeah. No, good, good, good points. I, I, I think we've covered it. All I'd say to people listening in is, what are you hiding from, and what do you need to do now? Be it in training, in business, or even in just general life. And what's that key KPI that that is going to turn things round for you and move it forward? And be honest with yourself. That's it. That's what we're here to do to inspire action, Steve, isn't it? Absolutely. And, it, and if any of this has got you thinking, guys, as you sort of sat there and you're saying, I'm, I'm not sure what my KPI is. I don't know where I need to focus. Um, I don't know what I should do here, what I should do there. Reach out to us. You know, mm -hmm. I've done it with Brendan. Wayne mentioned there he spoke to a, a, both of us on a couple of occasions where he just said, that, guys, I just need some help. I need to know yeah. what I'm doing, where do I focus and stuff. Brendan, you reach out to people in your mastermind, yeah. your mentors on a regular basis. Just reach out, guys. You are not doing it alone. You don't have to do it alone. So reach out, and we are more than happy to help. Steve is, is the man when it comes to nailing what that key KPI is. So if you want a brutal and honest conversation, but something that will turn your game around in any realm, then it's 
that's what you need to do. Reach out to Steve and uh, yeah, you've got a, a, an uncanny knack, Steve, haven't you? Of just like boom, there you go. That's yeah. That's there's, the, there's the, the, the customer service team tend to keep me away from certain conversations because I'm a little bit too direct sometimes. But you know, listen, I, I I'm I'm like a diamond with lots of rough edges. We just don't know which ones to <laughs> polish off. But guys, I, honestly, I mean it. <laughs> the, the Darlington region. You speak for Darlington there, don't you? <laughs> a diamond with lots of rough edges. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, like I say, reach out, guys. We are here to serve you. But gentlemen, absolutely love that chat. Really, really insightful. And, and thanks very much for giving up your time. I know the guys appreciate it as well. Guys, as always, reach out if you need us. You know, we've got your back. But until next time, have a great one. And we'll catch up again very, very soon. Thanks.